Can you guys hear me? Check, check. Making sure you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Can you sexy bitches hear me? Can you sexy bitches hear me? You can hear me, Luke. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, let's get the... I don't know why I have two copies of this epic pin up here right now. Okay, so I do have a sell on this. Let's just let's just go over um, the last couple of trades, right? So we, we talk about if we want a buy, right? If we want to buy, uh, this is the it really is the simplest pattern ever. If we want to buy, we want a one hour candle close with a tail longer than the body, like that one right there, right? Pretty simple. And then we enter at the opening of the next one hour candle, right? So you would enter at the opening of the next one hour candle, which would have been right here, right? Right, right, just move that red line too and I'll make an X. You enter at the opening of the next one hour candle, right there where I'm gonna exit, right? Does that make sense? And your stop loss is always gonna be below the low of that tail by probably 20 to 30 points. Okay, because you don't want to put the stop right at that tail in case it wants to come down and test that tail real quick, right? And then go back up. You want it below that tail by 20 or 30 points is how I do it. Okay, so that is a buy signal, right? Let's go back and look at this one right here. This was a buy signal, right? It's so simple, guys. Buy signal right there. You would have entered at the opening of the candle. You would have made money. This was a sell signal up here. And this was a sell signal that just happened 15 minutes ago. And maybe it's going to go up and maybe I'm going to lose. And that's okay, right? No system is right 100% of the time. And anyone who tells you that it's right 100% of the time, they're lying to you. Okay? So obviously on this one, because I'm selling, I'm going to have my stop above this area here at 17, whatever level this is, right? Luke, you should do whatever you think is best right are you in a sell at 1750 is that what i remember you should do whatever you th is most comfortable for you okay i can't i can't determine what your account size is i don't know what your risk tolerance is you know what i mean i can't determine that i can kind of tell you entries and i kind of tell you what i think but you need to know you need to decide whether or not you know what i mean i i i, I can't do that I can't do tell you what to do because then if you come if it goes back in your favor and you're just like, oh Clay, you told me to get out and I should have stayed in. I that's up to you, right? Okay? So my stop loss is obviously gonna be above 1763, which is the high of that can of that tail that we just that just closed, right? My my stop loss is gonna be above that. Does that make sense? My stop loss will be above that. But I, I can't, I have a hard time telling you what you should and shouldn't do if you should take it out or if you not if you shouldn't take it out. You have to determine what your risk tolerance is, and I can't, nor will I uh, take that responsibility, I guess. Does that make sense? I mean, I, I, I it's not that I don't want to help you, it's just that I can't. By 20 to 30 pips, correct. Because you don't want it to come right back up AA, right? And touch that wick and then go back down. So I always do it by 20 or 30 pips. I actually have the stop loss on this one at 1774 for me. So I have mine a little bit deeper, but I'm okay with that, right? I'm okay with that. So my stop loss on this is actually above all of this stuff up here. That's where mine is. But if you want to just do it, I mean, it hasn't hit my, I just, like I said, I, my stop loss is at 1774. So I would get stopped out of this cell at 1774. I won't get stopped out until 1774. So I went a little deeper on this just because I know that that 1717, 1770 area has been really tough to, to breach. So I'm going a little bit higher.
So I'm, I'm, I'm going a little bit higher on this one. Um, my take profit would be, my obviously my first area would be down here. Well, that's you're probably smarter than me. My, my first obviously take profit would be down here at this next level at 1748, right? So all you're doing, if you get past 1756, your next level is down in there. I will in a minute, man. I, I, I'm, I don't have, actually, I do have my phone with me. It's only on my phone. It's not on my computer. I guess it is on this one. So I can do it here in a minute. I actually don't see a... I don't see it on there. Um, is it... Did you go to Naked Trading, Naked Forex Trading? Is that the one you did? Oh, there it is right there. Is it you right there? Oh, that's Luke. Did you go to Naked Trading, Norman? Is that the Instagram you went to? Let me just address Norman here real quick and figure out if... Oh, no. I don't see anything on there. I, I don't see anything there yet, but let me, let me check. I don't see that there's a Instagram request on Naked Trading Forex. I don't see that there is right now. I don't know if you didn't get it right, but it's uh, this is the... I don't see one on there yet. That doesn't mean it's not there. I just don't see it. Um, so he says, would you look... Look for another entry if the hourly candle comes back down to opening price for a sell. If the pattern gives me another sell pattern, I will sell it again. AA. The answer to that is yes. Oh, Iron Man Futures Trading. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. I think I just I just approved. I, I, yeah, I'm switching over to Naked Trading Forex, to be honest with you. I like that one better. <laughs> so just Naked Trading Forex. I'm switching over to that one soon, but I still have my other one. But I don't. I think I just accepted everything. But the, to answer your question, AA, if the sell pattern happens again, I will sell it. Yes, every time the sell pattern happens, I will sell it. Or if the buy pattern happens, I will buy it. Right? And the buy pattern is like we talked about: the tail at the bottom longer than the body at the close of that candle. Right? My trading style is is the simplest trading style you'll ever see in your life. So if I want to buy it again, it has to be like this candle here with a tail longer than the body of the candle and have that one hour candle close, right? So right there would be a buy pattern, that candle closed with a tail longer than the body and no wick at the top. That's a buy pattern, right? You enter at the opening of the next one hour candle and then you always place stops at break even once you're up 30 to 40 points. Pips, points, dollars, whatever you want to call gold, I don't really care. But once you're up 30 to 40, you always place your stops at break even. And then when you get up higher, when you get up higher, you place your stops in profit, right? It's really simple. So once you get up 30 to 40, you place your stops at break even. Once you get up 50 to 60, you place your stops. Correct? So if you were to just go over the last several times that we had that pattern, and I don't know where... I don't know why we have two of these either. It's just, this is a little bit funky. If you were to just go over that pattern and back test it, again, I, I ask nobody to trust me. I'm just, again, I'm just some schmuck on the internet, right? Don't trust me on it. Go back test it, right? Go back test the damn thing and, and see if what I'm telling you is the truth. Go back test it. Do the homework, right? Don't rely on me just to tell you. Do the homework. But if you start circling every time you had that pattern, just start circling it. You know the parameters. You enter at the opening of the next one hour candle, right? You know the parameters. Just back test it. I have several examples of it right there, right? Several examples of it. So you have one example right here. You have two examples right here. Second example, you have the third example. You have the fourth example. And you have the fifth example. Now the question is, of those five examples I'm giving you right now, 
do you get to at least 30 or 40 pips on all of them? No, I would not. I would only I would only take another cell AA if a new cell pattern happened. No, I would not take another one if this one came back down to my entry. I'm I'm bullish on gold. So I'm I'm a bull on gold. I don't like taking the cells, but I took the cell because I know that over the long run I'm going to be right 85% of the time, right? I took the cell because that's what the pattern said to do. I'm overall bullish on gold. I think gold is going to go nothing but up. But I took it because that's what the pattern. So let's just go over these five examples. And it's really simple. On the first one, you get in at the opening of the next one hour candle, right? And that would have been right here where this, I'll get rid of all these. I'll, maybe I'll just make a different color. You would have gotten in at 1752 and it made a low before it started going up of 1745. So do you make enough on number one to at least get to 30 or 40 points on number one? Right, you get in at 752. You get in at 752 and it goes down to 1745. Do you get enough to make at least 30 or 40 points on number one? Yes or no? Pretty simple, isn't it? Do you get enough? I mean, you get 70 points there. Your stop should have been probably at plus 20 at that point. Do you get enough? Yes. The answer is yes. I won't wait for you guys. I was usually like Bueller, Bueller. Okay. Number two. Oops. Sorry. Number two, you get in here, you get in here, is your entry at 1762, right? And it makes a high before it starts crashing down of 1765. Do you get 30 or 40 points on number two at least? Yes, you get 30. You get literally 30 on number two, right? Oh, there's another example I didn't number. So on number one and two, you have, win, you have wins, right? Number one is a win. Excuse me. Number one is a W. Number two is a W. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we have this one right here that we didn't. And your stop loss is going to be 20 or 30 pips above. All right, you have this one right here. This candle closed right there. You would have gotten into your cell. Oops, I keep messing this up here. You would have gotten into your cell right here, right? At 1762. And it made a high of 1764. You wouldn't have gotten stopped out, I, I don't believe. Right there. And then if, if you held it, right? Let's see. Because it's pretty close, right? You would have gotten in at 1762 and it, and it makes a high of 1763. So do you win on, on this one right here? We're going to label this one number six. Do you win on number six? Do you make enough on number six? Right here, we're going to add number six to it here. Because you don't get stopped out, right? Because your stop is above by 20 or 30 points and it never gets to 20 or 30 points. Do you win on number six? The answer is yes. You win. Okay. Does everybody agree with that or am I just blowing smoke up your ass? Or does everybody agree with that? Or am I just blowing smoke up your ass? Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, number number three, because we had to relabel them, right? Number three, right here. And you should do, the, again, back test it. Don't take my fucking word for it. I don't want you to take my fucking word for it. Back test the fucking thing. Okay, I'm serious. Back test it. Back test it. It works on any pair, any time frame, whatever the hell you want to do. Don't take my fucking word for it. Back test it. Do the homework. Okay, on number three, you get in at 1760. It makes a high of 1764, 62. Do you make enough on number three to at least get to 30 or 40 points? Yes or no? Really, really simple. The answer is yes. That's all right. The answer is yes. Do you get enough on number four? The answer is yes. I already know that. I don't need to, I don't need to answer number four. The answer is yes. So this, this last one, we don't know for sure. But of the five examples I just gave you, how many times do we lose on that? How many times do we lose on that? The five examples. How many times did we lose? How many times did we not get to at least 30 or 40 points? Zero? I believe it was five for five. 
correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was five for five. I think it was five for five. Does anyone disagree with that? Five for five. All right. Um, what's I'm not a math major, but what's the winning percentage? Five for five. I'm not a math major. I was I'm a psychology person. I got my degrees in psychology. I'm not a math major, but what what is the winning percentage if you win five out of five times? What's the winning percentage? I'm not a math major. Oh yeah, it's hundred percent. And it's not going to be 100%. It's not going to be. It's going to be about 85. But of those five examples this week, if you would have just taken those fucking trades on that, just with that simple pattern, you would have been right five out of five times. Who wants a winning percentage of even 80%? Because usually it's between 80 and 85% accurate. Who would take a winning percentage of 80 to 85%? Who would take a winning percentage of 80 to 85%? Um, me. Sign me up for that every day. Twice on Tuesday and like four times on Thursday between 2 and 4 p.m. Eastern time. All of us would take a winning percentage of 80%. Right? All of us. So again, don't take my word for it. I don't want you to. I want you to back test it. You have eyes. You have the ability to back test it. If you want to do it on the 15-minute chart, do it on the 15-minute chart. It works the same. Do you want to do it on the 15-minute chart? Do it on that one. Don't take my word for it. I don't want you to. I want you to back test it. No, I never look at a 30 minute chart. I don't look at anything below a one hour chart. But if this is, I have the 15 minute chart up now. And if you, if you look at the 15 minute chart and you do the same analysis on the 15 minute chart, it's going to be 85% accurate. If you just start going over these, it's not going to win all the time, people. Not all the time. Okay. No system ever wins all the time. It just doesn't happen. Okay, there is no system like that. Okay, but there you have several examples right there. There's several examples of right there on the 15 minute chart. You could have just done it on the 15 minute chart, right? And I look at those examples. I can tell you already they win. The majority of those win too, right? Do it on the 15-minute chart if you want. I don't I don't care what you do it on. The point is it works. It works on Bitcoin. It works on gold. It works on all of them. Don't take my word for it. I want you to back test it. That's what I, I just, I don't want you to trust me. I want you to back test it. It's not complicated, folks. It really is not complicated. It's the simplest thing in the world. Okay? It's the simplest thing in the world. Now, if you can align it, and let's say that, because I consider the higher time frame charts to be the four hour, the daily, the weekly, the monthly. If you can align it with the trend of the higher time frame charts, let's say three of the four higher time frame charts are an uptrend, the four hour, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. If you can align your entries on the one hour chart with the trend, it's gonna be even better for you, okay? So I consider the, the longer time frame charts to be the four hour, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. And if I can get three of the four of those in one direction, let's say it's, it says bearish, then I, I definitely wanna look for sells, right? Well, at the end of the day, the higher time frame trends are always going to win the day. It may take some time, right? Um, no, because, and I'm not meaning to meaning this to be rude to you, Norman, or anything. I would rather get kicked in the balls than, than scalp. So I, I, I don't have any tips for scalpers because I would rather get kicked in the balls than scalp. That's just the way, I've always done it more this way. I would rather get kicked in the balls. That's just me. I, I never traded and been a scalper. I've always been more of a longer term person. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't scalp. I don't look I look for bigger moves, I guess. And usually I'll scale into trades, right? So no, I I'm 
I mean, obviously, if you're scalping, you just need to, it's the same principles though, right? You protect your profits when you have profits. This is gold, yes. This is gold. Yes, this is gold. Um, mostly my EA or my algorithm, my EA does most of my trading for me. I don't even have to look at a chart. My algorithm does it for me. And so if you go, um, it trades mainly the GJ. Okay, it trades mainly the GJ, my algorithm. But my algorithm right now is in buys on the GJ and up a lot. Okay, and it trades based on that same pattern. But my algorithm or my EA does my the bulk of my trading for me now. I don't even push the button anymore. It sets my stops. It sets my take profits. It moves stops when I'm up. I don't do a lot of um, manual manual trading anymore. My algorithm does most of it for me. Okay, and for those of you who weren't here earlier, just so you guys know that I'm... Um, I, I can, maybe I'll do that here in a bit. I, I, I got to get some rest. I've been up since 3 o'clock in the morning, and that was seven hours ago. So we might do, we might do the US 30 a little bit later. So just so you guys know, just because um, we're no FOMO homo traders right here, and we don't, you know, we don't do stuff that we don't, uh, you know, Um, Zahir, you can DM me on Instagram and I can show you the results. Um, but just for you guys that weren't here earlier, there is my some of my history for the last 30 days on a live account. What do you see there? What do you see there? What do you see there? Because correct me if I'm wrong, and I was telling the people here earlier, correct me if I'm wrong, you can't withdraw demo profits, right? What do you see right there? Because I remember like, oh, how do I know that's a live account? Um, you can't withdraw demo profits, can you? Can you withdraw demo profits? If that's a demo account, can you withdraw? <laughs> can you withdraw demo profits? I mean, if you can, someone's got to let me know how to do it because I've, I've been missing the, the ball game. If someone can tell me how to to withdraw demo profits, then I'm missing the game. I, I'm going to say something here, and please don't take it the wrong way. I am a white white man, right? I, I someone's going to have to tell me too how to use my white privilege card because I tried to go use my white privilege card the other day to buy groceries, and it didn't work. They rejected it. It got declined. I tried to go use my white privilege card to pay off my student loans and it got declined. So I, I'm, apparently I'm not using my white privilege card well enough either because I, I, it didn't, I wasn't able to buy groceries with it. I wasn't able to pay off my student loans. So someone's also going to have to show me how to use my white privilege card correctly because I'm obviously not using it correctly. <laughs> so anyways, all right. But that, that's just kind of a joke. All right. So what is that there right there as well? What is that right there? What is that right there? What does that say there? What does that say? Up here, what does that say at the top here? Does that say withdrawal history in Bitcoin? Because you have to withdraw from these brokers in Bitcoin. What does that say right there? Ah, uh, there, yeah, that's, that's, that is true, FTMO, you can, I guess that is, that is the truth. What does that say right there? Does that say withdraw history? That's in the last 30 days as well. So you want to just add those up. And I'm not, I'm not doing this to brag. I'm doing this to show you that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because you'll get a lot of people in that stupid ass gold chat that will never show you anything that I've shown you right here. You you get stupid ass people in that in that gold chat room that will never show you a tenth of what I've shown you in transparency 
but they expect you to follow them when they make trade calls. We were talking again, we're not going to talk about this guy that much this morning, but Dip and Sharma is in there every day in this gold chat room telling people to buy and sell. And he admitted, he admitted that he's not successful. He admitted it. But you have him calling out trades in the gold chat room, calling out trades to people. And all I was trying to say is, how can you do that when you know you're not successful? Like, people are, are listening to him. I'm like, I'm trying to help the new traders, right? I'm trying to say, you have to be able to show a live history of success. You have to show a live history of success before you should start calling out trades in a live chat room, right? But no, he just calls them out randomly. He just calls them out randomly and he calls me he calls me a gambler, right? He goes, you're just a gambler. But he takes trades with no stop losses. He takes trades with no stop losses, dip in Sharma, but he tells me I'm a gambler. No, I have stop losses on my trades. I have stop losses. But he doesn't. He tells people not to have a stop loss, and then he calls me a gambler. It's hilarious. The hypocrisy and the stupidity that goes in that gold chat room, Forex Aaliyah. Well, Norman, I don't, I don't do a lot of mentorship anymore. I've been trading, guys, I've been trading for 17 years for a living. My house is paid off from trading. I w I've been trading while most of these people's moms were still wiping their ass with baby wipes because they couldn't control their bowel movements because they were just babies, right? I've been trading for 17 years. Most of these people, mummies, were still wiping their ass. I've been doing this for 17 years. Longer than any of those schmucks. I mean, their moms were wiping their ass because they couldn't control their bowel movements. Let's just be honest. But anyways, if you want to talk to me about the, the algorithm or the EA, I will give you my other one as well. I'm 44. I will give you my other IG, Iron Man Futures Trading on, on Instagram. If you want to if you want to talk to me about the algorithm, get a hold of me on IG. Just send me a DM at Iron Man Futures Trading. There is a hater account. When you look up Iron Man Futures Trading, you're gonna see a hater account. Iron Man Futures Trading is a scam. I love the guy to death. He's a complete joke. And if you're not doing something important, you know you're doing something important when you have a hater account, right? Anyone who's doing anything important, anyone who's doing anything important has haters. Okay? It's a it's a joke. But I love the guy. I really do. I love him. He makes me he makes me laugh. It's great. But he's a fucking clown. He's a coward and he's a clown, and he'll never show his face. Whenever I whenever I go after anyone on Instagram, they know my they see my face. I have little little patience for people that are anonymous and are keyboard warriors on the internet, and they wouldn't say that to my fucking face. If you're gonna come after me, have the balls to show your face. But he doesn't because he's a fucking coward. I have little patience for that. Okay, I'm 44, I have five kids, I've raised kids, I'm successful. I have little patience for people who talk smack but won't show their face. Because most of them know that I'd beat their ass. So if you don't have the if you don't have the courage to show your face when you're talking smack, shut the fuck up and just go sit down. Go back to the kiddie pool, right? Because the deep end's dangerous. The deep end is dangerous, folks. And if, and, if, and if people don't like what I'm saying, A-Rod will tell you the same thing. This market will eat you up, chew you up, spit you out, and laugh at you. The markets don't give a damn about your feelings. It doesn't. Do you think gold gives a damn about any of our feelings? Gold doesn't give a damn about my feelings. Gold doesn't give a damn about your feelings. The markets don't give a damn. They don't give two flying fucks. So if you can't handle some idiot on... YouTube, me, going after you, how are you going to handle the markets, right? If you don't have the mental capacity 
to handle Clay, me, going after you in YouTube, how are you going to handle the markets? The markets will spit you up, chew you out, and laugh at you. They will laugh at you. The markets don't give two flying fucks about your feelings. But in today's society, it's all about feelings, right? Oh, you said that and that hurt my feelings. Who fucking cares? Grow a set of balls. Let your balls drop. Grow a set of balls. No one gives a fuck about your feelings in the market. You're not entitled to anything. Earn it, right? Earn it. I've worked my ass off to be where I am. I've worked my ass off in 17 years of learning how to read the charts. Um, yeah, I guess I will, Luke. But right now, there's really nothing to do, right? So we just talk kind of a little chit-chat and a little smack talk while we wait for that. But yeah, I'll wait another 17 minutes, then I'm going to go take a nap. I've been up since 3 o'clock in the morning. It's almost 10 o'clock. So seven hours I've been up. I've been up all night, so I need to get some sleep. And then the Seahawks are playing Thursday night football tonight against the Rams, and I absolutely have to watch my Seahawks play tonight. So i got to go get some sleep at some point. But I'll stay until the next one-hour candle closes, and we'll see. we'll see how it looks. But again, this market doesn't give two flying shits about your feelings. Right, right. I, I, my, my, my style is very brash, right? But it's because I've been through all the battles and I'm trying to get people to toughen up, right? My, I, I am an asshole sometimes, but I'm trying to get people to toughen up and to, get, to grow thick skin because you have to grow thick skin in order to be successful. The difference between successful traders and non-successful traders isn't the charts. It's the six inches between your ears. It's your mental side. The difference between winning and losing traders isn't the charts. It's the six inches between your ears. And most of these people are, the, are so weak mentally. You can't hurt my feelings. You're, you're going to get your feelings hurt. I promise you. You, you. you trade long enough in the market. You're going to get your feelings hurt. So you might as well get used to it. You might as well grow a set of balls and get used to the fact that you're going to lose sometimes. You're going to get kicked, kicked down. I lost 9%. A couple weeks ago. 9%. Who cares? I'm up probably 12% this week. Who cares? Losses are a part of the game. Right? Pick your pick yourself up off the floor. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get up and get on the fucking horse again and do it again. I lost 9% a couple weeks ago. Probably $13,000 or so. Who fucking cares? 9%. It was probably about 13 grand. Who fucking cares? It's part of trading. And my, so my style gets gets um, portrayed as I'm being rude. And maybe I am. I'm just trying to get these people to grow a set of balls, I guess, is at the end is what, what I mean. Grow a set of balls, folks. You know? But these kids today, these younger traders, you know, this, this new generation of traders, they expect everything to be given to them. They think they're entitled to it. You ain't entitled to nothing, right? I, I, I watch TED Talks a lot, and we're only talking because we want to wait for the one-hour candle to close. I watch TED Talks a lot, and this psychologist said he talks to people that just graduate from college, and after eight months of, in the job, he asks them how they're doing, and they say, well, I'm doing okay, but I'm just not really making a difference. And he says, you've only been here for eight months. You've only been here for eight months. But they want to be at the top of the mountain, right? They want to be making an impact, but they're not willing to put in the time. You've only been here for eight months. You're not making an impact. So what? Put in the time. The answer to that AA is yes, this could be another cell candle right here. But since my cell is right, basically about right where it is right now, if it closed like this, I would just keep, I'd probably just keep the one I have in now. I probably wouldn't add another one, but we'll see. But yes, that would be a cell candle again right now. That wick is longer than the body, right? And I don't like it to have a, a tail at the bottom. So if it's a cell, I don't want it to have much of a tail at the bottom. Okay? But I wait till the one hour count. So I wouldn't want it to have much of a tail. It can have a little bit, but I don't want it to have much. Okay, so in 
13 minutes, if this candle closes like this, yes, that would be a sell signal. So the question, AA, is if you know that you're going to be right 85% of the time, would you take this trade? If you know that you're going to be right 85% of the time, would you take the trade? Yeah, because they get everything right now, right? They, France, they've never had to wait for anything. Everything's on Instagram. Everything You can order food right off your phone, right? You don't have to wait for anything. Yes, Norman, you would because you're a robot, right? At that point, if you know you're going to be right 85% of the time, you're a robot, right? You just take the trade. And if you took the trade, if it closed like this, your stop loss would have to be above the high of the wick. Right, so it would have to be at least above there, and it would probably be above 1760. So it would probably be somewhere in there, 1762 or something like that. But you take the trade because that's what the that's what the numbers say. I'm just a numbers guy, folks. I I, did, I developed this pattern. I see this pattern. I've been doing it for a long time. I don't even care. I'm just taking the trade because that's what the numbers and dictate to do. Right? It, it, it's nothing other than that. And if I lose, I lose. I, I don't care, okay? You, you learn several things. I don't know if any of you guys are married. I've been married for 20 years, okay? You learn several things when you're a married guy. You learn two phrases. You're right and I'm sorry because you're always wrong according to your wife, right? That's just the way it is. And you always have to say you're sorry even if it wasn't your fault. No, I majored in psychology. I have a master's degree in clinical and forensic psychology. So I have a master's degree in clinical and forensic psychology. So I, I, I deal with the human mind more than anything. It fascinates me. I didn't major in math. But I, I, I have a, I guess, it was, I don't like to, I'm not going to brag, but I have a, a pretty photogenic memory. So I can look at numbers and just, they make sense to me. But I'm a psychology, I'm a psychology person. But that has also helped my trading as well, right? Psychology has helped my trading. Mm -hmm. Understanding human emotions, understanding my emotions and what gets me tick, right? What gets me tick, understanding my, my emotions has been extremely helpful to my trading. No, I don't. Whenever I feel like it. And I usually I don't do it because I hate YouTube. I hate YouTube, so usually I don't. I don't usually stream. I only did it this morning so I could show that dumbass dip in. So I could show that dumbass dip in what real trading looks like. So I could show him what real live trading results look like. And then he, it was just hilarious, you guys that were in here. He admitted again that he, he wasn't successful. He wasn't a successful trader. Yet he, again, he's going into the that gold chat room that we're all in, telling people to do buys or sells, and he can't prove that he's successful. And I keep trying to tell people, why are you listening to this person? Why are you listening to this person? He's already told us that he's not successful. Why? Why? It, you should never call out trades. First of all, you should never call out trades in any chat room ever. People should, should do their own, right? They should do their own trading. But you should never call out trades, specific trades in a chat room if you can't prove that you're a successful trader. And, and, and they get so upset when I say that to them in there. It's hilarious. It would be like, again, walking into my bank, right, Norman? Walking into my bank and say, I want to invest. And they say, well, we have this fund that's doing really well, Clay. Do you want to invest in this fund? And I say, well, let me see the history of the fund. Let me see some results. And the bank says, no, you don't get to see that. Am I going to invest in that fund? Yes or no? Am I going to invest in that fund at my bank if they can't show me that that fund is profitable? Am I going to invest in that fund? No. So... When I hear someone say that they're not successful, and I knew he wasn't successful from the very beginning. There's just words you can you can hear when you've been in the game as long as I have. I knew he wasn't. But he's in there calling specific trades, specific trades to people, and people are following him. And then he admits that he's not successful. Like, what the fuck are we doing, people? You know? What the fuck are we doing? 
Oh, look at this, it's jumping now. So so it, it would not have the pattern here, obviously. Right, because that pattern just, it looks like a solid blue candle, we'll see. We still got eight minutes left, so we'll see, but it wouldn't be. Yeah, it's big balls. It, well, it's, just, it's honestly, it's stupidity, right? I mean, to be honest, it's stupidity. And I keep telling people in that room, and I'm trying to protect them more than anything. I'm trying to say, do not follow anybody in this room that cannot show you a live history of success. Do not follow them. Do not listen to them. I've shown you a history of success. I've shown that to you. You still shouldn't listen to me. You should do your own trading. I still don't want you to listen to me. But you definitely shouldn't listen to someone who has admitted that he isn't a, a winning trader. I, I don't know why that's that makes people mad in there. I don't know why. Because I'm the one that end, end up ends up getting the heat in there. Only for saying that you shouldn't follow a guy that's a complete jackass. Right? You, you should, don't follow someone who's a complete jackass. Luke, Luke, look at the candle right now. Does that have a wick at the top longer than the body? Luke, you're making it more complicated than you have to. Just look at the candle. Does it have a wick at the top that's longer than the body? The one that's forming right now. You got, you got to look at the charts, man. Look, that candle right now has no wick at the, or very little, right? So yeah, so there's your answer. It's not a bearish candle right now, right? In order for it to be a bearish candle, it would have to have that wick at the top. Right now, it doesn't look like a bearish. That, that, looks like, that looks like a momentum candle to the upside to me right now, right? Now, again, you have six minutes, but that, that all you have to do is look at that chart. That's, and I, I'm not picking on you, Luke, but that's exactly what I talk about in the gold room all the time. Look at your charts. Look at your charts. To me, that is not a rejection candle to the downside. To me, that's... But it still could be, right? It still could. We've got six minutes left, and it still could close that way. But right now, it's starting to look a little bit more, but we have to wait. That's why we wait. Right? That's why we wait. You just got to look at it, man. It's really simple. You just got to look at it. You can Usually you can answer most of your questions, right, by just looking at the charts. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to pick on you. I hope you don't believe that I'm picking on you. I'm just saying, instead of asking people to do the work, just look at the charts and learn. Because each candle tells a story. And your job as a trader is to read what the candlesticks are telling you, right? Read it. What is it saying? Each candle tells a story and you have to be able to read it, what it's saying. Now, it's looking more and more like one, right? Five minutes to go and we'll see. But you got, you just got to look at it. We'll see. We'll stay here for five more minutes and then we'll see what the, what the dealio is. But Luke, the honest thing is you don't really need to study that much more. You just need to look. I mean, it's really simple what we talked about today, right? The, the buy pattern, the sell pattern. Whether it's a, whether you have a rejection on the candles. If there's no rejection, that means there's it's not, right? You, there's really not. It's really simple. People make trading too complicated, too, I believe. That old saying, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Trading doesn't have to be complicated. It can be simple because people always ask me, and they're like, "That's it. That's all. That's all you. Ha that's all you do." I'm like, yeah. They're like, it can't be that simple. Yes, it can. Why can't it? But our brain doesn't think it can be right. We're like, "There's no way it can be this simple." Um, I I stream whenever I have a wild hair and I feel like it. I don't like, like I said before, I don't like to stream. I actually hate YouTube streaming. I hate it. I think YouTube are a bunch of communist bastards because they censor free speech. Um, I don't like how I'm a conservative in the United States. I don't like how they censor conservatives in the United States. They take videos down. They censor free speech. So to me, YouTube's a bunch of communist bastards. So I don't like being on here because I, I think that they are one of the worst companies around. I don't like any of them. 
I think you sh shouldn't be censoring free speech, especially in the United States. But they don't censor liberals, right? Liberals can say whatever they want. Democrats or liberals can say whatever they want, right? But you get former President Donald Trump, who every time you post a video of just an interview of him, YouTube removes it because they're censoring people because they're a bunch of communist bastards. So no, I, I hate being on here. So, and plus I don't like to be, the other thing is I don't like to be tied down to a specific time every day to stream. I like my freedom. I get to do whatever the hell I want, whenever the hell I want. And everyone defines freedom and success in a different way. I define success as being able to do whatever the hell I want, whenever the hell I want. And that's what I have. Oh, that's right. We've got to just, um, uh, a-Rod and I always, I dislike my own stream because I really don't care about YouTube followers. I don't care about likes or dislikes. I don't care. I'm not doing this because I want YouTube followers. I haven't monetized my YouTube account. I don't really care. I don't really care, right? I could care less if I have no YouTube. I don't do this for that. I do it really sometimes to make fun of people. It's part of it. But I don't really care about YouTube subscribers. I don't care about Instagram subscribers. I don't care about any of them. All of that crap could go away and I'd still make money every day. So you can see I disliked my own stream and I believe that was A-Rod that did the same thing. I don't really care. Okay, I don't. Again, I could give two flying fucks. Okay, to me it's closing in one minute and to me that's not, that's not going to be a, a candle with a wick longer than the body of the candle so I will not take another... Unless in the next 30 seconds it dips down a lot. I will not take another sell on this one right now. Unless in the next 30 seconds or whatever it goes down a little bit further. Okay, so let's see if the when the next candle pops up. But at this point it's not. It's not. The wick isn't longer. So that would mean I would not take another one. Unless this thing wants to do is just do a little dips, dipsy do in the last few seconds, it would not be. So there it is right there. So no, no, no new trade for me. All right, guys, it's pretty simple. I explained it to you guys. I, I'm out of here. I need to go sleep. I need to go take a nap. I'm worn out because I've been up all night. And it's 10 a.m. now. I've been up for seven hours since 3 a.m. in the morning. So I need to go sleep. Okay. So just do me a favor, if, if, if Dip and Sharma goes into that chat room, I'm still going to hold my other one, yeah, but I'm just not going to enter another one. If Dip and Sharma goes into that chat room starts trying to call out trades, just remind him that he's not successful and he shouldn't be calling out trades. Okay, just remind him that, that no one should fucking follow Dip and Sharma or anybody that can't prove that they are successful traders. Just remind him of that every time you see him in the chat. Say, hey, you admitted to being an unsuccessful trader. Why the fuck should anybody follow you? Just, just do that, okay? Do that for me, and I'll, I'll keep doing these live streams for you. But just keep letting Dippin know that he's a complete joke and a complete fraud. And that don't ever call out trades in that live gold chat room again until you can at least prove to us that you have two weeks of history of live success. Okay? All right, you guys have a great day.